Oh, hey, didn't see you there. So this week on Poots Garage, uh, we're gonna be doing a steering upgrade that's uh, been needing to do for a while. So uh, let me show you what we're doing. We are finally replacing the steering shaft on this truck. It's a much needed thing that I've needed to get done. You can see this is the old unit, very nasty, and this is the new unit, nice and clean. So you might be asking, how is this even an upgrade? It does the same thing, but I don't know. How does a GovLock and an 89 Chevy rear differential work? We don't know, it just does. But no, this is actually a, a very simple upgrade. It's a, it gets rid of a lot of the funky stock engineering from back in the day and does a lot more simplified setup. So you can see in the stock steering shaft, we have this funky bell joint deal here, which allows you to swivel and it goes in and out a little bit basically that length there and then this side has the infamous rag joint these things are nasty they're uh, known to fail especially when you're using them like off-road and stuff you start really cranking on them and they get real nasty this one's still hanging together all right besides the fact it's soaked in oil but i mean it's not the it's not the worst system in the world but they do provide quite a bit more slop in the steering and stuff and so this is our new setup here this is actually a steering shaft out of a jeep cherokee xj uh, if anybody knows me from back in the day i was a big jeep cherokee guy and hey maybe someday i'll get another one to beat on or something but but this is a brand new shaft uh it's ready to rock we do have to do a couple small modifications to get this to actually fit like the ends are the right size the only difference is on the uh, steering shaft side the way it mounts together the stock one uses a through bolt right through the middle of the shaft and and the Jeep one uses a uh, like a clamp style on the edge there. So I do have to cut just a notch on the edge of the steering column side of it, which is no big deal. And I believe this side bolts right up. I'm glad they came with new bolts. I wouldn't have thought about that when I bought this. And then the other thing we have to do is we actually have to uh, shorten it a little bit. Uh, these are collapsable shafts for, you know, being in an accident or something. Getting a bad enough car accident, they'll actually collapse instead of, you know, stabbing through your chest. So I had measured the stock one out to about 19 and a half inches, roughly. And this one here, and I'm going to right here basically from where I measured, we're at 21. So we actually have to collapse this thing about an inch and a half. There's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, I think it depends on the type of the shaft you get. Mine looks like it's been dimpled on all four sides. They just squeeze the metal in to kind of lock it onto the solid shaft in the middle. But a lot of people, they actually have to heat this thing up because there's like a plastic insert in there and the plastic sometimes will come out of those holes and lock it in place. I don't have the plastic but there might be still a glue or plastic inside of here that I have to mess with. So I'm gonna try to just collapse it as is. You can have to beat on it pretty hard probably to get it to shrink down a little bit. And then uh, if I can't, then I'll hit the torch with it and see what happens. I think I've also seen some people who are saying they, they actually drill these out, which is not a bad idea, but we'll see what happens when I start beating on it. And this is what we're working with under the hood. You can see in the middle of the screen there, that's my steering shaft coming out of the steering column. So we actually have to grind just a little bit of a notch right across the top. It's no big deal. And then you can probably just barely see the steering box side way down here. That side should go on no problem. And as usual, before we get too deep into this video, we gotta go to the map. So what we're doing is comment where you're watching from and I'll put a red pin on the map, so check it out. And we're at the map. So I got five locations and we got a bunch of pins, so let's get to this. First up is Pine River, Minnesota. Next is Moscow, Maine. Tri-Cities, Washington. And for our first one in Maryland, we have Baltimore. And last this week, we got Mankato, Minnesota. All right, great job calling them all out. Uh, keep letting me know where you're watching from and I'll uh, put another pin on the map. We also still have stickers to give away. So if you would like a sticker, all you gotta do is send me your address to pootsgarage at gmail.com. That email address will be in the description of the video. I also like seeing uh, pictures of what you guys are working on or anything else you want to share. Uh, if you get a sticker, uh, shoot me back a picture of where you put it and then I'll put those pictures on a future video. So I've watched a few videos on this just to make sure uh, you know I do it right with notching and stuff like that. But I've never, everybody talks about uh, collapsing the shaft one way or the other, but they've never really shown how to do it. Maybe I just didn't search hard enough. So we're just going to kind of wing it. Uh, before I apply heat, I'm going to try just to beat on it. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll try to be gentle on things. I guess you'll want to be careful to uh, not beat on these little these little U-joints too hard because I don't know how strong they are. Somebody else had mentioned that too, so that's a, that's a good little tip. If you go this way, it's not very good, but if you go this way, you can see these ears kind of stick out, so if I put a flat, I should be just on the ears, so I think that's a good plan, and we should be able to do that on both sides. So let's give that a shot. I'm also gonna use a block of wood, not anything hard, try to keep things soft. 
and then I'll put a little little piece of wood on top. Hopefully it doesn't just split that. But, and I got a nice 45 ounce dead blow, little plastic one, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let's see what happens. I'm also gonna put a couple little paint marks on here just so I can tell if I'm uh, actually making any progress or not. Put some random notches on there. I'm not going exact now. I just want to see if this thing's going to actually move or not. She moves. So I had a paint mark that was just ahead of this one that's going inside now. So it seems to be moving now. Um, nothing is broken, so I think we are good. Now we just got to figure out exactly how close we want to make this thing. Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, I just got to complain about the weather as usual. <laughs> it is cold again. Jesus, why does it keep doing this? Last week started off great. It was like 50 degrees during the day and it was just, it felt great. Last weekend, you know, it was, it was cool like getting up and actually having a little temperature. I could step outside and breathe the fresh air. But no, it's, you know, teens again in the, at night and 30 something at, during the day. But uh, here's a cool little footage I took the other day when we had just this crazy little uh, wind and snowstorm come through. So check this out. I gotta admit, this is my first winter out here in Nevada. Uh, well, not my first, but my first full winter. I moved here uh, the end of January last year, so I didn't really get the full grasp of how many months it takes. But yeah, it, it's been pretty chilly this year and I am freezing my butt off. So I'm definitely ready for some uh, nice warm spring weather coming up and then even the hot summers I really enjoy too. So looking forward to that. Cause I'm tired of just being cooped up in this garage. You know, when it's cold outside, you don't want to go out and do stuff. I'm just, I'm cooped up in this garage and even in this garage, it's so cold sometimes. What do we got? We're at 54 degrees right now, so that's not horrible. But yeah, I just can't wait for some warm weather. So I did just kind of think about something. Uh, in order to get this thing to fit, I have to actually collapse it further than the size it needs to be and then be able to extend it back out into position, right? Because you can't just can't just fit it in there. You have to go one side and then collapse it, fit it, and then extend it back out, right? How do the Jeep Cherokees do it? I guess they never took a shaft off a Cherokee before. So I'm gonna collapse this thing quite a bit more now, just to see, and then uh, maybe once it's broken free now, it'll probably move a little better on its own, I'm guessing. So, I don't know, let's find out. Oh yeah, did you see that move that time? I think we uh, definitely broke it loose, whatever was in there. So when I measured it on, measured the truck, I went from the end of the shaft, end of the shaft. So pretty much from here to basically here. And we are sitting right at 19 and a half right now. So I'm just gonna stick it in the truck real quick and uh, see if it actually fits in there or not. If not, I have to collapse it another half inch to an inch probably. So I think I've given you guys the best possible video angle that my little pea brain can manage, so let's try to fit this thing in here and see what happens. So you can see that side slides right on. The bottom side definitely does not. Hold on. I don't know if you noticed, but this truck has a CB antenna mounted on the fender over here, and it makes it really difficult to work around. Like it's right where I need to be. Definitely not gonna be able to get that bottom one on without uh, collapsing this thing even further and then trying to pull it back out. So I was just playing around with the joint up on top here and I was like, I need to figure out where I wanna notch the shaft at, you know, figure it out. And I noticed that the bolt doesn't, it's not a real crazy bolt. It doesn't really intrude too much. So I'm like, do I even need to notch it? And I don't, I don't know. As you can see, I haven't touched this. I do have a flat on here. So I wonder if maybe some of them don't have a flat. So I have a flat, I can slide it on, I can put the bolt all the way through and thread it in. So I'm not sure what the purpose of notching it even is. Mine fits. Maybe others don't, or this cheap Chinese uh, steering shaft is uh, maybe not quite right, but works better in a way. All right, so you saw that I don't need to notch my uh, steering column. That's kind of nice. That's one less step I have to do. Maybe, maybe they're using a smaller bolt that doesn't intrude into the 
into the hole as much. I don't know, but it'll work and we're gonna do that. Uh, one small thing I did notice is, uh, so these sit basically 90 degrees from each other. From what I can tell, my columns don't line up 90 degrees. So my steering box, I want that to be absolutely center on center, obviously, because that's the center of your steering box. But my steering wheel is gonna be way crooked. So hopefully uh, the steering shaft on these for the steering wheel is splined perfectly. I think they are, they should be. I think all cars are pretty much. So I'm probably gonna have to pull the steering wheel off and then actually recenter it and put it back on. But we should be all right there. Shouldn't be that big a deal. So maybe for now I'll just have a crooked steering wheel. It's not that big a deal. But other than that, all I'm gonna do is collapse it down further so I can get it to fit in there, bolt it up, and then uh, extend it back out. And hopefully everything lines up and works out right. Might be nice, quick, and easy. Coming at you with the best angles on YouTube. So the steering box only has has a flat on one location. So obviously that end has to go in one spot only. So we'll put you in there. This side is just big enough, I think, to get it lined up. Yep, like that. So, I've got the lower end with the bolt all the way through. I think I'm actually gonna snug that bolt down just to make sure it's tight on everything uh, before I start beating on it, because I'm gonna have to probably beat this end up into the steering column. So I just wanna make sure that side's all tight and snug before I, you know, rip something apart on accident. If you don't have really long extensions, get yourself some. They make life so much easier. Now, I just got to see if this thing will beat back up into place easily. Hopefully it'll move a little easier than how it uh, collapsed. If I can even get in there. As you can see, I'm having a hard time getting uh, getting the right angle to beat on stuff. This is this is turning into a real pain. Problem is, I can't get a good full swing at it, nor do I have a very good spot to hit it. So uh, I'm gonna have to come up with something just a hair different here in a second. All right, that's getting it moving. Just need a little more, a little more weight. I wasn't even lined up. There we go. Now we're in. <laughs> Whoops. So I think that's as far as we want to take it. Cause it starts to uh, taper out there and I don't want to clamp it down on the taper. So I think that's good. Put a bolt through that just barely fits. tight we got our new uh, column bearing that we did earlier in a, in a previous video and uh, we we're snug down as tight as I want to go I don't see any wiggle room on the shaft itself so that should be good there's our finished product shaft is in bolted in on top uh, everything's tight looks good nothing wiggles nothing's loose there's our bottom down there I'll get you a different angle there lots of room to look under here still so there's the new the new end without the rag joint everything's nice and, and tight bolted down and snug and now I can't spin my steering wheel anymore it's nice and there is like no play in there it wiggles but that's just kind of that's just everything else moving around I can't really turn these wheels too much I mean they turn but they are extremely stiff because I have no grease in any of the joints and everything needs to be broken in still so we're good here and my steering wheel is pretty much straight if I kind of let it straighten out there that looks perfectly straight and then uh, what I was going off at center is uh, 
the box manufacturer they actually marked the shaft there with the red paint inside and then on the body there to signify centered and it's actually centered so i think we're good on that that steering shaft that's awesome but it is the next day now uh hey we gotta do this again i gotta complain about the weather again check this out Man, two weather complaints in one video, you know it's getting bad. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you're tired of seeing this master cylinder <laughs> laying on the bench and needs to go on the truck. So I think we're finally at the point where we can put this thing on. So we need to bench bleed it still. We didn't do that last time. All we did was paint it so it looks nice and won't get all rusty again underneath the hood. So let's get that on. But before we do that, so before I start, I need to go get some brake fluid. I don't have enough to really do a whole lot. I could probably bench bleed it but I can't really do much with it on the vehicle so let's run to the store probably not the best time to be going to the store right now but uh we need brake fluid <laughs> not to mention driving and stuff like this is kind of fun to me so. Brake fluid, I was hoping to find the uh, proper master cylinder bleeding hoses to go from the ports back into the reservoir, but they didn't have those. I don't even know where to get those anymore. I might have to look online. Uh, I should probably just buy a, a cheap set just to keep on hand. Usually they're just little plastic fittings and hoses, I'm pretty sure. Who knows where mine went? Uh, I lost it in the last move, so we're just gonna have to bleed this thing the, uh, the hard way. So uh, let's get back home. So now that that steering shaft is done, uh, we got some extra time left here, so let's finally install this master cylinder. All right, we're back from the store. All we got was a couple of these jugs of uh, brake fluid, just the cheap stuff. Don't need nothing fancy on this. So we got two of those, plus I have one that's like three quarter full. It's old stuff anyway, so we can use that up. So yeah, um, not a crazy shopping haul or anything so so i know i've talked about this before uh but we got a lot of new people here so i'm going to be bench bleeding this master before we put it in uh i got some little protection uh, cloth on my vise here for so i don't damage my new paint the biggest issue is that i don't have the proper uh little fittings with the hoses that go back into the reservoir i mentioned that earlier i think when i was at the store so i gotta figure out how to do this without those and uh instructions that come with it say obviously the tubes or the preferred method but if you don't have those then you can uh i guess 
plug them and cycle it. I'm afraid of blowing those plastic caps out that come with it and you know having fluid all over the place, but that's my only option right now. So we're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> so my master's in the bench. I got a bunch of rags handy. I got my old fluid here. First step is to actually put fluid in without the plugs and then wait for fluid to come out of the ports and we'll plug them up and then we can start doing the uh, cycle process. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way in case things start going sour quick. <laughs> I wanna be able to uh, not have a ton of fluid in there. I also have a drain pan on the ground, so hopefully it'll catch whatever falls off of my vise. It's gonna be a mess no matter what. A little persuasion to get the bubbles to work out. They claim this is to get fluid in the seals so that when you start cycling it, it's not dry, but uh, if anything's happening, it's extremely slow. Put a little more, a little more level in there. Nothing yet. Oh, check it out, we got one going. Cap that one now. Hopefully, I can do it without making a big mess. There it goes. Can't see it dripping because it's flown out on the rag, but this one is now flowing. We are capped. Now I'm gonna try and cycle this, and I'm gonna try not to pop this whole thing out of the vise that's not held in there very good. You can see the bubbles coming out. Just barely giving it anything. All right, there we go. We seem to have gotten all the air out of it. It took way longer than I expected. There was all sorts of pushing and pulling and tapping and everything, but we finally got to the point where there is no air bubbles coming back out. So let's install it. So this is where the master cylinder is going to be going, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of gunk and build up in here and something leaking out of the, the end there. I don't know if that's power steering fluid coming out of the uh, hydro boost unit or if that's the old master cylinder leaking. I think that was master cylinder, but uh, I want to clean all this. So I need to figure out a way to kind of mask and contain things and get a drain pan right up underneath there. And I'm going to blast it all down with some brake cleaning. <laughs> clean my nuts and uh, yeah this might not be a big deal to you guys but this is a huge deal to me this thing I've been staring at that nasty old rusty thing sitting right here like top dead center of like the visuals since I've had this truck the thing has been so gross and I stare at it every time but I always dread like I don't want to just swap it out randomly you know I always kind of wait for something to fail before I really get things replaced so this is a big deal to me now it might not look like this to people to subscribers now but this engine a few years back when I actually uh, redid everything looked Beautiful. I love the way this thing looked. These valve covers were all polished and that intake was brand new and that FI tech was clean and I repainted a bunch of stuff in here. So I mean the engine itself looked awesome, but then I always had this big rusty thing right next to it that just looked horrible. So this is a big deal to me. So be excited for me and with me. <laughs> but let's get this thing in. Let's like sneak it in this bracket here. Yeah, buddy. Don't forget the bracket that I just moved out of the way. Ideally, I would probably paint that bracket, but uh, we're not being ideal right now. Obviously, next we gotta hook up these lines. Let's get those on once I get the right wrench. Correct wrench coming in hot. I don't think it's the right wrench either. I think it's supposed to be 9 16th. So we'll do one at a time so we don't make a big mess here. Probably still make a big mess, but it's the thought that counts. Looks so pretty. But we're not done yet. We gotta bleed everything still. We gotta bleed uh, all four corners of the vehicle still to get the fluid through everything and get all the air bubbles out. So I wanna get that done tonight before 
before I get lazy and go sit on the couch and uh, end up not doing it all this weekend. So let's get that done. And then these brakes will be completely finished. Okay, besides the parking brake, I have no parking brake cables yet, but it'll stop on its own. I don't need a parking brake, right? You can manage without it. So, <sighs> almost there. So obviously, we gotta fill this thing up all the way now. Last thing you wanna do is run it dry when you're bleeding it. Kinda defeats the purpose of uh, bleeding it if you just suck air back through it. Remember when I first got this thing? Nice, beautiful cabinet. It was in a video. If you're not paying attention. So, it works great. So we're gonna try this truss seal thing. I haven't used this in uh, several years, so hopefully it still works. So this is my trusty old uh, Blue Point uh, vacuum bleeder. This thing is, has bled a lot of bricks in its time. Uh, this is back from my dealership days, which is when I used to actually spend money on tools. Basically all we're gonna do is we put compressed air on one side and it blows through, causes a venturi, and it makes a vacuum in the tank. And that will put a vacuum on the end of your hose. So we'll just put this on each caliper as we go in our little sequence around the vehicle and uh, suck all the air out of it basically and pull the fluid from the master all the way down to the caliper. The biggest thing I'm worried about is this hose is so old, it's very stiff. And uh, all the brake fluid and different things that I've used it for over the years have kind of really degraded it. So hopefully it holds together long enough and uh, I should probably look into replacing this hose. So it's ready to go next time. Uh, but yeah, let's give it a shot. Just taking you on the full tour today. You guys remember this guy? This old air compressor. <laughs> this is like this old shop. Uh, this air compressor I bought when I first moved to Washington, right? This was one of the first big purchases I think I did when I moved there. Uh, I needed air. I was working on my fair lane. I think I sandblasted the whole engine compartment in that little one car garage I had there. I, I rented that place. But uh, yeah, I kept it clean and whatnot. And, uh, this old Bel Air air compressor, it's just a 120, but it was big, which is what I wanted. So it works great. I can wire it up 220, but it doesn't really increase the power wise or anything for it. Am I even in the camera? I think so. And uh, yeah, so this old girl is still pumping. I actually had it in the uh, Washington Granite House, you know, where I had that little dirty old shop that I worked out of. And uh, I never could hook it up though, because I never had the actual power to run it. Even 120, that whole shop was run off of a single one, uh, like 30 amp breaker, and that breaker was like 300 feet away. So the amount of wire to get out of that shop, that shop did not have good power. I would blow breakers all the time. If I ran, it wouldn't even start this compressor. It would chug, 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 and then just blow the breaker. But I could barely run like a space heater, like I'm running out here right now. I could barely run that and if I ran anything else with that, like uh, even just a, an electric uh, drill, like a big drill motor, it would blow the breaker. So <laughs> it is so much nicer being out here and actually having some, some decent power. But I will still blow a breaker if I keep that uh, space heater on and run this compressor. I think I'm not gonna risk it because I don't wanna go out into the snow and have to reset my breaker on the outside of the house. So we're gonna turn off that space heater. Yeah, so basically all you gotta do with this, this is a one-man show. You just That's all you do, pull the trigger and it starts pulling a, yep, I can feel the vacuum. So we're good. And then it's got a little lock for the trigger, so you can just leave it. This is gonna get obnoxiously uh, noisy for you guys probably running this, so let's get to the music. corner one time. Uh, I haven't done any more yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually get in here. I'm going to feel this brake and this will be the, the moment of truth, you know, <laughs> but I expect the brake's going to be soft anyways. All the calipers are all the way out, all the way around. So all those have to come in and then 
There's probably still some air hiding in the line somewhere. Uh, when you replace this many parts, there's always a, a, an air bubble that's like clinging to the side of something, you know, all the dry parts and the nooks and crannies in, in the insides of everything. So really got to kind of pump everything and get things moving to get all those air bubbles broken free and whatnot. And then I'll go through and uh, bleed it one or two more times, you know, so. This will be the moment of truth right here though. <laughs> See if we got anything. So this should go to the floor. Okay. Back to the floor. That feels good. I almost hear a leak somewhere, so I gotta double check everything. But it actually feels pretty good right now. It's feeling solid. Just gonna pump it up a bunch here and get everything moving. I don't know if that was a leak I heard or just things a uh, massive cylinder moving around over there. But we'll double check everything here in a minute. Doesn't feel too bad. So we're gonna go through and bleed it all again, check for leaks and see what happens. I don't see no leaks up here. My cap is on, so that, a lot of times you hear the fluid like squirting up and then coming back down inside of itself, so it could have been that. Uh, it could also have been shooting a lot of air out back up into the cylinder there. We'll pop that cover back off and see the fluid's probably all aerated. It just kind of always happens, but uh, you know, we're not leaking fluid at our fittings. We can look around each of our ends here, make sure we're not leaking fluid anywhere. I don't see no puddles. This side looks dry. Come to the rear. I don't see nothing in the rear leaking. We got our center area there that's not leaking. And no leaks on this corner, so I think we're good. We're just gonna go through and uh, bleed all four corners again and uh, see how everything feels. So I went through everything, uh, bled everything again for the second time, and uh, let's give this a shot. Let's see if it feels any different. Uh, I'm pretty confident in the way everything looks and feels. Like the fluid's coming out pretty good and the master cylinder had absolutely no air in it from pumping the brakes, so that's a good sign. All the air bubbles are pretty much out of the system, I think. So let's see how it feels. Floor again and hard, nice. I like that. That feels good to me. This is a great day. So we got nice good brakes. I got tight steering. Woo I'm feeling good today. This is kind of crazy now. So I don't have a whole lot left to do on this thing. Like I can probably, maybe a couple little items I can kind of pick away at, but uh, I got I got two big things I got to do. Well, it's not even a big install item. It's just things I got to buy and it's really expensive and I'm not looking forward to it, but we're going to have to do it. So I got to do wheels and tires. I know I keep talking about that. So I got to, I got to pull the trigger. I think next weekend I'm going to, I'm going to go down and put some money down on some wheels, I think, but I have no idea how long until they take to get. If they're going to be right away, if they're going to be uh, weeks or months out, I don't know. And then I got to get tires still i gotta figure out what tires i even want thinking just some like nitto muds or what's the other common brand right now uh i, I really like a uh, toyo the toyo mud tires so i'm thinking of doing one one or one of those just to try something a little different you know getting away from the bfgs that i've always ran and i always love but these tires are a hair cheaper and these tires are really expensive to begin with so we'll, we're gonna try that out and then uh, unless somebody else has some better options then maybe i'll look into that and then the next thing I gotta do, which I was trying to figure out, what else do I have? Can I put this thing on the road? And I remembered, I gotta do drive shafts still. So I gotta figure out what I'm even gonna do for drive shafts. I don't wanna keep the slip yoke anymore on the on the tail shaft of the uh, transfer case. I wanna convert that to a, a solid mount. So it's not very expensive, so I can do that. And then uh, obviously you gotta have a custom drive shaft made to fit in between there. And with the lifts and the wheel travel that we're expecting on this thing, everything's gonna have to be custom. So I gotta get it on the ground before I really figure out lengths and stuff like that. So I gotta at least put the jack stands up under the axles or get this thing on wheels and tires, you know? So I got a lot to figure out and uh, I don't know how much more content I really have on this truck for a while until I get this stuff figured out. So we might be working on the Corvette here soon. I know I have one good item that I need to put on that and then a couple other things that need to be done. Uh, I guess this truck, I do need to change all the fluids in it still too. Axles, drive shaft or transfer case, engine, transmission, all that stuff. So. We probably got a few things to, to hammer out, but 
not the most exciting things. So other than that though, I mean, we're getting down to this. This thing's gonna be on the road. It's gonna be drivable by this spring. Once the weather gets nice, I wanna be able to take this thing out. You know, we're gonna go out to Moon Rocks. We're gonna go do some shakedown runs on it. We're gonna take my crusty old trailer and tow this thing out there probably. So it's gonna be exciting. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, we still gotta do front shocks too, but I can't, I'm not sure if I really wanna set those up yet until I kind of flex things out a little. So that might be a little, a little difficult to do. But yeah, so we got a few things to do, but we're getting down there. So if you're still watching, you know, please like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do on my videos. All that stuff helps out the channel, helps me out, and uh, helps these projects out, so it helps keep us going. So I will talk to you guys next weekend.